Hey everyone, with this Photoshop tutorial, I want to share another technique of creating some warm soft color grading. So if you plan on following along, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of this video. And now let's jump right into it. As always, we have to do the raw adjustments first. And since we want to do this in Photoshop, I'm going through them in the camera raw editor. Let's start this by changing the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast, brightening up the darkest parts of the image slightly. Now let's expand the basic panel. As the base image is quite nicely exposed and we have details in every area of the image, we can right away set up the white balance. And as I said in the intro, this image will be color graded in a very warm style. I'm going to increase the temperature first giving the photo instantly some kind of golden hour look. Just like that. I'm not touching the tint since I think otherwise all the colors look quite good. Next up, I do want to fix those blown out parts in the sky, especially in those clouds and maybe tweak the shadows a bit. So first off, let me bring down the highlights, which should bring back details in the sky. And I also want to bring up the shadows for the opposite effect, of course just like that and maybe let's even raise the blacks which will help with the dreamy effect just like that you can see there's still a little bit of underexposure going on you can see this when holding down the alt key and clicking on the blacks slider but that's mainly in a very near foreground where the details don't really matter so the exposure like it is now is very very good let me introduce a bit of texture adding just some more sharpness to the smallest details. And at the same time, I will be dropping the clarity and I will be dropping the dehaze, which just helps creating this soft, dreamy look overall. And of course, we want this image to be vibrant. So let's raise the vibrance. I'm not going to raise it too much since we will be doing some more color grading later on, but for now, here we have the image after the base adjustments. So we went from this rather cold image to this much warmer and also less contrast rich scene. Next up, we want to adjust things locally for a bit. And that means we need to do some masking. I guess for this image there actually will be quite a lot of masking involved. Let's start with the sky. What I want to do here is make the blue part of the sky darker and thus just add some more contrast, bringing out those clouds a little more. So for that reason, I am going to create a color range mask and just click in here. You can see this is selecting quite a bit more than just the sky. So I'm going to make use of the refine slider and bring it down slightly. And this is still not enough. So let's just say subtract and here choose a linear gradient. And I'm just creating a linear gradient like that. The reason for me to subtract the right part of the sky is since here the sunlight is coming in. So it wouldn't make sense to make this part darker. Just the left side. Uh, actually, let me go back to the color range mask here and target the far left side as well. So I'm just going to hold on the shift key and click in there again just to pick up that color range as well. Now with the mask set up, I'm simply going to bring down the exposure. And this helps quite tremendously introducing contrast. But what you can see is now right in the center, the sky is a little bit darker than on the left side. We want to change that. So let's create another color range mask, only targeting the very far left side, just like that. And again, we need to make use of the subtract function using a linear gradient just targeting this left area. And again, bring down the exposure. So this way we get a much more natural fade going from the darkest sky on the left to the brightest sky on the right. Wonderful. Next up, let's create a new mask and here we're choosing sky. I want to boost the saturation of the whole sky. So let's go down here and bring up this slider. I'm going to raise it quite a bit since I want the sky to be a vibrant blue tone like that. All right, now let's work on introducing some glow on the right side. For that reason, I'm using a simple radial gradient. I'm going to use multiple ones. 
with the first one being rather small, just like that. Also, I'm going to rotate it to fit the light's direction like that. And I'm just placing it right there over the mountain in the back and the trees in the foreground, making sure the center is outside of the image. And with the radial gradient positioned, I am going to bring up the blacks all the way up, which introduces a very cool glow effect. I'm also going to go down to the effects right here and I'm bringing down the decays again, which just helps with the glow effect. Wonderful. Then as I said, I'm going to be using multiple radial gradients. So let's create another one. This time I'm making it quite a lot bigger and again, rotate it slightly. Let's position it again. And here, one more time, I want to bring up the blacks. And what I want to do next is to introduce some warm color tone coming in from the left side, from the right side. So we could do this using the temperature slider, but I want to use that color box right here, since I can add a very specific color tone. And let's first set up the hue. I want to go somewhere in the yellow range. And I also want to bring up the saturation quite a bit so the color is actually visible. Wonderful. At this point, I'm not sure if I like how the sky is looking. I do think I need to create another linear gradient, just targeting the very top part like that. Maybe bring it down a notch. And again, just bring down the exposure, adding some more contrast. I think I need to drop it further down. And let's see, maybe bring down the contrast even further. Perfect. Now the top portion looks quite good. Let's also work on the foreground. Again, I'm just creating linear gradient, targeting most of the foreground, except for that lake in the center. What I want to do here is to introduce a more contrast. I can do that, of course, by simply raising the contrast, but it also helps to raise the highlights. And I also want to bring down the shadows. Now we might be risking some more underexposure, but we can fix it by simply raising the blacks again. Just like that. Perfect. And then let me create a radial gradient just for that center area like this. And what I want to do here is to, again, just introduce some contrast, bring up the whites, and I also want to introduce clarity in this specific area, just to get some more details in here. Then I want to create one more mask, and this is specifically for this mountain, which at the moment does look kind of strange. So I'm starting this by using a linear gradient and just targeting the mountain very, very roughly like this. Here I'm saying subtract, choose sky, so the top part is already fixed, but I also want to subtract from the button part. So I'm just using a linear gradient for that and go up like this. In here, I'm going to simply raise the contrast. And just like that, it looks much more fitting into this landscape. All right, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. So we went from this to this, quite a difference. Now let's continue with some more specific color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer tab uh, where I just want to play around with the saturation. This means I'm going to slightly bring down the yellow tones, but in turn bring up the green tones. And I also want to bring up the blue tones. All right, looks good to me. Then I want to head into the split toning where I want to target the highlights to apply a very warm golden hour like color tone. So let's set up the hue first, somewhere in the yellow color range again, and then just raise the saturation. Wonderful. Now I also want to target the midtones, but instead of going for a warm color tone, I do want to balance it out with a colder color tone. So I'm going to set up the hue first, going somewhere in the blue range, and just use a very tiny amount of saturation here but this is looking really, really good. Finally, let's head down into the calibration tab. I just want to bring up the blue primary saturation because I just think it looks quite nice. All right, now we're almost done. 
just one more thing to do and that's the sharpening in the details tab as always i'm using the same settings bring down the radius increase the details add a bit of masking and then just introduce some more sharpening done and here we have the image after the raw adjustments before after now we can tweak this image some more so let's open it up in photoshop okay the first thing i want to do is to clean up this image so let's use the spot healing brush there are a few dead branches of grass down here which i want to remove with that because those are just rather distracting all right now i'm also going to stretch this image a bit trying to make the scaling of the whole landscape a little more interesting therefore i'm going to hit ctrl t and then i'm just holding down the shift key click on that bottom point and just drag it downwards very slightly and this will just make the mountains appear to be a bit bigger and it will also scale up the lake in the center so it just is a little more prominent and then let's add some autumn glow for the soft look i'm going to duplicate that layer for this then to add this autumn glow effect i'm going to filter blur and here we're choosing gaussian blur not going to change anything the radius is usually set to around 30 pixels for my images and i'm going to hit ok of course this looks super weird so let's head straight into the edit menu and here we are clicking on fade gaussian blur here we need to change the mode going from normal to something like lighten and of course this is way 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 too heavy so we need to tweak the opacity bringing it down until we find a good looking spot i think around 20 percent looks quite nice so let's hit okay usually i don't like to have the autumn glow effect over the whole image so i'm going to apply a layer mask grab the brush by pressing b make sure the foreground color is set to black and now i'm just going to brush out a few areas mainly here in the foreground where i don't think we need the glow effect and maybe there in the distance just over those shadows it doesn't make much sense to have glow over them all right that looks great at this point we could make use of a little bit of dodging usually for the dodging and burning i'm using the tk panel plugin but in this case i think we can do this without it i want to target the highlights of the image and make them just a bit brighter without affecting the shadows so i need a way to select the highlights and i can do this by hitting ctrl alt 2. you can see the marching ends around the highlights so that means we have a pretty good selection with that selection active i'm going to create a new layer and then it's really important to hit the layer mask icon by doing it this way we now have a layer which only targets the highlights of the image what we need to do then is to set the layers blending mode to overlay and again grab the brush by pressing b and since we want to dodge things i'm setting the foreground color to white and make sure to bring down the brush opacity to not overdo this effect and what i can do now is to just paint over all those highlights i want to make brighter just making this image a little more interesting just like that you can see the difference when i'm turning off this layer without dodging with dodging so much much more interesting next up we can do a little more color grading using the gradient map adjustment layer so let's go into that menu down here and apply the gradient map at first this will look super weird but don't worry we need to change the blending mode to overlay once more and let's bring down the opacity i'm going with something like 20 percent still it doesn't look good so what we need to do is we need to change the gradient just double click on it what this does is with that point on the left side we can target the shadows colors and with the point on the right side we can target the color of the highlights so in a way this is like split toning but it will also add more contrast to the image so let's click on the point on the left i want to just give it a cold color tone something like this maybe and you can see how the image is getting a lot darker let's hit ok then let's click on the point on the right side and we want to make the eyelids warmer so let's go somewhere in the yellow color range 
and give it a very saturated warm color tone. Just like that. Now let's hit OK and you can see the difference. Without a gradient map and here with the gradient map. Of course, depending on your liking, this might be a bit too much. I think I will bring down the opacity some more. Want to have a subtle effect out of this, but I think this looks great. And finally, I do want to add another layer of Orton Glow. So I'm going to hit Ctrl Alt Shift E, merge everything into a single layer, and again go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, hit OK, go to Edit, use the Fade Gaussian Blur effect, change the blending mode to Lighten, and bring down the opacity. I think this is looking quite good this way, so let's hit OK. And again, I'm making use of a layer mask to just brush out a few areas here. And that's the finished image. So I hope this color grading tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.